This is going to be part 3 of the tutorial series where we are creating a Brick Breaker game using Unity Bolt. If you missed the first parts, make sure you check out the previous videos. Also, before we get started, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Now let's focus on our life system. So we want to have three lives. So if we hit the bottom three times, we're gonna actually do. So we have a sprite for that, we're gonna we have some hearts. So let's just drag and drop it in the scene. Okay. Gonna be live. We're gonna do three of them. Let's actually make this a little bit bigger before we duplicate it. So let's, that's too big. Let's do two by two. Okay, so we're gonna actually position it up. Okay, so let's just duplicate this three times. Position them wherever you want. Okay. So just to clean this a little bit up, let's lives. Put all of three there. Okay. So our game manager is also going to handle our lives, but we're going to create a new flow machine for that just to keep it separate. Let's go to Bolt Flow Machines. Game Manager. Okay open that one up so we actually before we do that we need to know when we lose a life to be able to do something with it so we're going to actually go to the ball beforehand open this one and what we want to do is if we hit the bottom we want to actually trigger an event so let's go to trigger custom event or custom Trigger custom event. We're gonna choose a name for this. Let's put on live lost. And we actually need to trigger this on the game manager. So we need to create a new scene variable like we did with the paddle. We're gonna go to game manager. We can assign it after afterwards. So just put that it's a game object. So we're gonna call this get variable in on the game manager so every time we lose a life we're gonna do we're gonna trigger a custom event called on life lost on the game manager and on the flip side of this is when you go to the game manager and we edit this game manager graph we can actually delete both of this and create a custom event on life lost you have to make sure that this name matches exactly the one you put there so every time the ball hits the bottom, this is going to be called and this execution is going to happen. We're going to actually add a variable here. So it's going to be lives. We're going to start with three lives. Okay, so three. So every time we hit the bottom, we're going to set a variable lives. We want to decrease our lives by one. So like we did before, we have to first, sorry. So first we get the get the lives, so get variable, object, lives. We add minus one. So we add minus one. And we set it. We also want some visual change to this. What we actually want to do is every time you lose a life to have one of these hearts to be alpha out, so something like this. You see that that life is missing. So to do that, we need to do two things. First, we need to add those images to our variables. So let's call this lives sprites. This is going to be a list of sprite render. And we're going to add three of them here. Make sure you add them in order. So this is the first one. This is the second one. This is the third one. Okay, perfect. So now back here, every time we lose a life, we first set the variable here. And then what we actually want to do is to do a, sorry, we want to get the variable, variables, 
so the sprites we want to get this is a list so we have to get get item like we did before at what index so at, at this index the, the lives remaining that we have and we want to actually do sprite render color set we're gonna just bring the alpha down to i don't know 100. So every time we lose a life, we should see that. One thing we don't have to forget to do is to go to the in variables and make sure that our game manager is set correctly. Save everything. Let's check this out. We, we can move, we send it out, we lose a life, and nothing happened. That's because we're not we didn't connect this this flow. We actually need to do this here. Perfect. It was grayed out before. Makes sense. Let's try it again. Now every time we lose a life, yeah, we see the heart gets grayed out. Okay. Okay. Now that we have our life system, we, are, we want to actually check if the game is over when we lose our three lives. So let's go to the game manager, open up the game manager graph, full screen. Okay, so remember we, on life lost, we decrease the value of lives. What we, want, we actually want to do here, to check, so we're going to do a branch. We're gonna hook it up after we change the sprites. We want to check if the lives value less or equals to zero. So we hook it here. Move it a little bit. If it is, we want to actually do time scale. We want to set the time scale to zero. This will stop everything from moving. So let's see how this works out. Let's play. So we lose one life. Two lives. And then we can still move this and the ball won't move. We're also going to set a variable here. So let's go to object and let's create a is game over. This is going to be a boolean. Starting false. So if we lose the game, we're going to do set variable. Object. Is game over. This is going to be true. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is once we set this variable, we want the paddle to be able to move only if we're not in game over so let's go to paddle open this here so before we we do all of these checks we want to make we want to do a branch and this is only going to happen if this is true sorry this is false we'll see why in a second because this is going to be a get variable from object but it's not going to be from us it's going to be from another variable so this is going to be a get variable as well a sim variable so we want from the game of the game manager we want to check we want to get an object an object variable that is going to be sorry this is going to be here there we go and from this object we want to get a variable that is going to be is game over and if is, is game over is false, we want to actually move the paddles. Okay? So to recap, we have in our game manager, when we lose the game, we set the variable, the other graph, sorry. When we lose the game, we set the variable is game over to true. And in the paddle, we want to only move if is game over is false. So let's test this out now. You can see now we can move, everything works great. Start playing, we lose one life, two, 
Now we cannot move anymore. We can't do anything because the game is over. So to clean this up a little bit more, we're going to create some UI for the game. So a really simple panel. We're going to go to game object UI image. This creates a canvas. So just to make this work, we're going to use canvas scaler scale with screen size. And we're going to do it 180 by 1920. This is a full HD portrait. So let's call this, let's actually create a him and a child. Let's call this loose panel. And we're going to call this back, background. Here in, U, in UI, we have some elements. So the background is going to be this window. You, you see this really small. You have to just press set native size. Let's center it. Okay. We can duplicate this, call this title, so this is going to be you lose. Again, set native size. We can position it there. We're actually going to put some stars, just some empty stars. You can actually customize this however you want. Just an example. So we're going to just create some empty stars here. Let's duplicate this. Something like that. We're gonna add a replay button. So this is going to be this image. Set it zero. Move it down. We want this to actually be a button, so let's select button. And we need to add a uh, behavior to this so when you press this the game restarts itself so let's go to bolt sorry to bolt flow machines we're going to create in the flow machine so ui panel because we're going to use this for both panels okay we're going to remove both of this and here we're going to add a variable so this is going to be our button Let's actually call this replay button. So this is going to be a button. We're going to drag the button here. And we want to get variable. So we'll get object variable. Button. Replay button. And we want to listen to the on button click. So when this button get, gets clicked, this gets triggered. And we want to actually just load the scene again this is the easiest way to restart so load the scene and the scene name has to be the same one that you have here so this is going to be main okay perfect so now we actually need to make this panel a prefab so again just go to prefabs drag and drop it here we can just delete it here and every time we lose the game, we want to instantiate that panel. So let's go to the game manager. We're going to add a new variable. So lose panel. This is going to be a game object. This is going to be the lose panel. Okay. Always save everything. And if we go to the flow graph, we want to go to the game manager one. Open it here. So. This is when we lose, so we just want to instantiate. Okay. Perfect. And we what what do we want to instant sorry, we need to change this to be instantiate. The one with the parent. Okay. So we want to instantiate the game lost panel. So get variable from the object. Lose panel, okay. And now for the parent, we need to actually use the canvas. We're gonna need one more variable here. It's going to be canvas. It's gonna be a game object. And we just drag it here because all of the UI elements need to be instantiated as a child of the canvas. So here we do the same thing. So get variable, and we're gonna get the canvas. We're going to hook it as the parent. When we lose, after doing all of this, we will just 
instantiate that panel. Let's make sure we save everything. Let's give this a go. And yep, after we lose, we can see this. And when we click the button, everything loads up again. But if we press space, we see that the ball is not moving. Just one small thing that we forgot to do. Remember when we when the game was over, we set the time scale to zero. And this doesn't get reset when you load the scene again. What we actually need to do is in the flow machine for the UI panel. Before we load the scene, we need to set the time scale back to one. So set it to one. There we go. Now if we test this out. We have our loose panel. If we press replay, you can see everything works perfect and we have our three lives back. Okay, so this is going to be it for the third part of this tutorial. In the next episode, we will see how to add power-up drops to the bricks. As always, if you like the video or have any questions, leave a comment below and consider subscribing. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next tutorial.